Meet Clement Mangar. He's an agent out of the immigration department in Belmopan who provides a number of services to customers hoping to access documents. Mr. Mangar, you are out here almost every morning, are you not? No, ma'am. I come out here at 6 o'clock. For what purpose? Um, I follow farms. But is that something you do often or you just do that today? Three years now. Three years now. So you are in fact out here every day? Yes, ma'am. Here is one immigration customer's review of Mangar's service. Yesterday we came and um, we couldn't get a number, a ticket. Um, but there was a gentleman out there that was selling me a ticket for $100. Uh, but I didn't pay it, so I have to be here today again and try again. But Mangar says he's not the one hustling. These hustlers come and take all the first numbers. No, sir, the allegation is that you've been selling spots. That, that was in the past, but I stopped. I used to come out here and take a spot for people. I stopped because it is wrong. The public deserve the first numbers when they come. What they come and do, they take the first numbers and they sell them. And that is wrong because people need to get the first preference free. If they come out here at 1 o'clock, get a number 1, 2 and 3 where they come from. Whosoever, one hold one number, hold for 10 go back. That are my advice. And when you used to sell space, how much you would sell the space? Then? Only 50 for somebody. No sell. I hold the spot and I tell them 50 dollars and I get it. That's it. And these people? I stop. I stop because it's wrong. So everybody must stop. Now, what are you doing here now? I only do only recommend that for my passport here and there. And so when you do that, how much you charge for that? Oh, $20, please. And while Mangar says he's retired from lining up cones and bricks, the competition, who chose to speak off camera, is saying something else. He said he's a CEO, he's a boss, so no, just Mr. Mangar, just, I don't know if it's about Mr. Mangar. You know, Mr. Mangar, come and go. So... I have nothing, any, nothing against him. He's doing, he's doing his own hustling as well. Everybody needs to eat. You understand me? Todos ganamos. Do you know what time they come here? 9 to 11 o'clock and 10, 5, 6. I came here and I was 4. You know what happened? I end up 13 today. We come out here from 10 sometimes, you know, and yes, some of us do put the cones there and because we now stand up here for 10 till 6, 30 till the end, ready for putting the people inside. So when we stand up there for them, when they reach here, they will reach at 6 o'clock. Some of them fall back in the line and we fall out of the line. These people come, a lot of them come here many a times. You have to bring, if you get number 30 yard, 40 yard, you have to bring your pillow, your sheet, your bed. You know, and these things are really ridiculous. By us doing that, standing here for people so that they could get a number, I don't think anything wrong with that. And for us to, if they give us something, where they're saying 150, 200, that's a lie. You know, because money not go up on a tree, and I don't think if you have to make we charge people a ridiculous price. I have customers who I help, and you guys could ask them, they could attest to it, that I, if I come out here and I stand for them, I am doing it for them. Some of them come give me $10, I say, God bless you. But at the end of the day, we're helping them so that they could get all the way from PG, Dangriga, Corozal, them places where the people reach a men, they don't get tend to none at all. Some people end up in a hotel that we're on call for. Stealing, we are charging the people, we're not forcing them. You don't have to give us, if you don't want our service, then you come out. And when you, feel, when you see what you are going through, then you will say, oh, you know what, I should have begun with Tunnel from the beginning. But while that debate raged outside, we went inside for an official position. That, from the minister's standpoint, we do not tolerate that. Just this year alone, we've dismissed a security guard that was found to have been selling uh, five tickets at $50 each. The only way we were able to present the case and dismiss him is because the young lady not only admitted it, she put it in writing and she spoke with us. So what happens a lot of time people would throw it out on Facebook but they wouldn't inform us uh, in detail. In terms of Mr. Mangar and I being a CEO, I'm the CEO for immigration specifically and not for this individual so i don't know why he would be calling my name out there but i recall about mid last year i literally went out there and i spoke with all these individuals saying that they're agents shortly thereafter i got a letter from one of them complaining to the mayor 
that he was issued a trade license and the ministry is hindering him from doing business. The ministry does not support these individuals in their activities. The ministry does not support the selling of tickets. We put systems in place. We try to oversee the system, but we can't sit all day just looking at the ticketing system. We have other things to do, meetings to go through. So people realize that, and that's where they take advantage. Um, we have tried as well to bring it to the attention of those out there, put signage and say, you know what, you don't need to be uh, interacting, you don't need to pay anybody for anything. Come in, get your ticket, you get in the line and you go through the process. But that's as far as we can do. Director Arzu says that come Monday, things at the immigration department's gates are going to change. Take them away and put them in jail, that's the easiest thing I would look at. But um, we have, we have had this conversation over and over with Mr. Manga, and of course he uses this, uh, I'm a good POP type of excuse. Um, but we recognize that if he's breaking the law, then we ask that the police addresses that. We're not that entity with that um, legal authority, but we don't encourage him either. And according to CEO Middleton, the issue of bricks and cones is a symptom of a systematic issue, one that shouldn't last much longer. This lining up from 3 a.m. is a recent phenomena in terms of the COVID-19 pandemic. It seems that every person's passport lapsed during this period. The opening of the borders, so now individuals are trying to get to Melcher, trying to get to Chetumal. So from our estimate, this will not continue. And also when all the district stations regain the capacity for passport applications and Belmopan focus on printing, we're of the opinion that these lines will literally be non-existent. Sharice Halsell, 7 News.